Hey guys, today I'm going to be showing you how to install this massive 12.5 inch display in this Mercedes A-Class. Let's do it. Now this is purely an installation video, but if you actually want to see what this thing can do, I have got a separate video on my channel where I play with it and do a review. Okay, let's get on with it. To get started, we need to remove the screen and on the back, you're gonna find that there are two flaps with screws behind. So we're just gonna open those flaps and take those screws out. So it's a Torx screw and you're gonna need a Torx 20 bit on your screwdriver. Oh, lift it up and pull it out. And we can see that we have these two connectors here. So I'm just gonna disconnect them. And as you can see, there is a slight difference in size there. Next, we need to remove these vents. And you need a special tool for this, something like this. It's basically just a piece of metal with a little hook on the end. I suppose you could do the same thing with a coat hanger. Uh, but what we want to do is actually get it in on the bottom of these vents because there's a hole in there. I'll show you once I've dragged it out what it's supposed to look like. Right, that's the first one out. And just to show you what we're doing, we're putting this little tool in the hole here and it's coming out here and we're sort of hooking on this and then pulling it out. And this is a bit of a bore lake of a job and as you can see, one of the metal clips has come off and disappeared inside the dashboards. I'm gonna go and have to find that now, but that's after I've removed these other two vents. That's two. Okay, so this is getting easier as I'm pulling out. What I, what I found is that what we do is we twist this 45 degrees and then pull and then it will come out. That's the easiest way to actually get these vents out. All right, so as it happens, I don't need to take the center vent out. Uh, I can see the two Torx, looks like Torx 20 screws in there. So I'm gonna take them out now. So to remove the radio, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put our finger in here and you can see that there's a, uh, a bit of a catch, that plastic catch here. So if we push that down, you'll see that the radio pops out. And that is how we are now going to remove this radio. Now I'm just gonna detach all the wires from it. And there we go. But don't forget, this will be going back in. We just needed to remove it to gain access to the connectors behind it. So next we're gonna pull this off and just remove these three screws. And then we'll just put this to one side. And that gives us a bit more access here. Now at this point, what we need to do is run cables from this hole to this hole. And we don't really have any room to do that. We also need to place the GPS antenna and the 4G antenna. And again, there isn't really anywhere to put them at the moment. So we need some way to gain access behind this. And what we're gonna do is remove the glove box because if we remove the glove box, we're gonna be able to get our hand up behind all of this and we'll be able to finish off this install. So that's what I'm gonna do now. Right, so what we need to do is have a look under here and you can see we've got an A cap here. So how we remove these plastic bits here is by basically just pulling down on the top there. And there we go. So it just basically pulls these things out. There's two of them. And then this thing here will actually fall down and we just want to unplug the bulb like so. And then we can get this out of the way. The next thing we want to do is remove this side panel here and we use a plastic removal tool for this. Don't use a piece of metal like a screwdriver or something because you will end up damaging your plastic. Just give this a pull and remove it and just put this to one side. So now we have access to this screw here for the glove box and also and the other screw is just here just uh, under under here. And then if we open this up, we've got a screw there, a screw there, and a screw there. So that's, uh, that's what we're going to be uh, taking out. And then we can just lift this out like so. And the glove box is 
held on by this one clip here. So just take this out like so. And then we can get this out of the way. And so now with the glove box out, you will see that we have all of this access. So we can get behind the radio, we can get behind where the screen is up there, and even better, we can get up to where the vents are and the very top of the dashboard, which is where the GPS module will have to sit. So uh, this is gonna make the job much, much easier now. So now we're getting to the point where we can start connecting the wires up. And one of the things that you're gonna notice about these cables is that they're very, very thick. And what that means is if you just shove them back behind the radio, you're not gonna be able to get the radio back in. So we're gonna put the majority of these cables out of the way behind the glove box and only have the piece of the cable that needs to actually be behind the radio. And that will make sure that we actually are able to put this uh, original factory radio back in place again. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna feed the majority of this cable behind the side here. So that the majority of the cable is now over here. Now if you have a high spec audio Mercedes, you're gonna find that you have some fiber optic cable connections in here. And what you're gonna to need to do is unclip them from the back and plug them into the extension that comes with the new Makiti unit. Uh, that's so that the factory head unit still has access to those fiber optic connections. Now this particular car does not have the premium sound system and so there are no fiber optic cables. So what we're gonna do is literally just plug this into this like so and close it and there we go so that is now plugged in how it's meant to be so we're going to grab our main connector here and we're going to just pop it up here because we need it to be where these cables are up here and then we grab this loom which has the uh, usb connections on and you'll find that it has this connector here for the screen so we just literally plug that into this like that clips into place. The USB ports are obviously so that you can plug in USB sticks filled with music or movies or even firmware updates for the head unit. So they should really be accessible somewhere in the car. The easiest place that I can think of is in the actual glove box. So that's where I'm gonna run the cables. And what you'll find you're left with is the two connectors that we actually need to go into the back of the screen. So we're almost there now. Now we need to place the GPS antenna and the 4G antenna, and we're gonna use the space created by removing the glove box now. Now when it comes to GPS, you need to make sure that it gets as high as possible up here so that it gets a good signal. It can be inside the dashboard, but it needs to be at the very, very top. So if we have a look underneath here, you can see that we can gain access all the way up to the top of the dashboard. And what you want to do is place this underneath the foam at the very, very top of the dashboard. And then of course the connection will need to go up behind the screen with the rest of the wires. The 4G connects the same story, as high on the dashboard as you can so that it gets a good signal and that's uh, pretty much it. And then we run the FACRA connector again uh, behind the radio. So at this point, we're pretty much almost done. So what we're gonna do is pop the factory radio back in situ again. Now, to do this, remember, you need to make as much room as possible behind so that we can slide this all the way back in. And what you'll find is there's these two big block connectors. So you need to make sure that the extension part is pushed down out of the way, sort of just push it right down into the dashboard because all you really want is this to plug into the radio. So what we do is we pull this back like so, so it's an open position and then we plug it in and don't forget the front panel connector here which goes to the front of the radio now when you push the radio back in you're going to feel that it gets to this point where it doesn't go anymore, okay? And then what you need to do is put your hand into where that clip was, where you removed it and push it all the way forward. And that will allow the radio to actually be able to be pushed back further in. 
And there we go, it's nice and flush with the dashboard, exactly where it's meant to be. Right, now we need to put the bracket back on up here. So, what we do is we pop our wires through these holes, and then we push this in place. And then this part here, And on the back of this, we have the two main connectors, a 4G and a GPS SMA connector, and that's what we're gonna connect up now. And then finally, the two big white connectors. Okay. Okay, so the final piece of the puzzle is for the sound itself and that is transferred through this little adapter here. So this is a USB to 3.5 mil jack, which is designed for Mercedes-Benz. The USB needs to go inside the armrest here, and then there's a 3.5 millimeter jack, this thing here, and then this 3.5 millimeter jack will basically plug into the main head unit and into this USB port. That does mean that we need to find a way to get the wire from inside the dashboard through the center console and into where the USB port is because we don't want to have wires outside. So let's do that now. So we open the armrest and what we're going to be doing is removing this part here. So what we can do is we can just get our hands underneath the plastic and you'll feel it pop up. There we go. Now be careful because of course it is still attached with wires for the knob, but we just want to put it to one side. Now we have these two Torx 20 screws that we need to take out, so let's just do that now. And now we can lift out the USB ports like this. Now the reason I have taken this out is because I need to find a way to get this wire past this section and into the USB port. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to take a little notch out the side of this, just enough to allow for my USB cable to go through, and that means we can hide the rest of this and the rest of the wire from the armrest. And there we go, with this notch in the plastic now, this wire will fit nicely in there, which means that this is gonna look nice in the actual center console armrest. Right, let's put this back together then. All right, so we'll just move this to one side. We'll grab our aux box, and we'll stick the USB through this hole so that it comes out on the other side here. And then, and move the wire side and then all we have is a wire that goes down there and a spare USB port and if you ever want to unplug this and plug in an iPhone or something and use the factory system then you can do so that's that's pretty cool now we need to put these screws back in so now we need to get the cable from inside the center console into the main dashboard and the way that we're going to do this is we're going to run the aux cable between the carpet and this plastic, run it underneath the trim here until we get up here. So here we go, we've got the 3.5 mil jack now inside the center console and it comes out here on the other side of this plastic. So it literally goes under the plastic of the center console and into the center console and then we can plug it in here like this and then we can run the rest of the cable now and to avoid this from sort of knocking around in here as you're driving as it's metal what we're going to do is we're going to pop some adhesive on the back of it and just stick it down here back on this side again you can see we have this wire now hanging out on the plastic so what we're going to do is we're going to feed that wire up underneath the plastic all the way up so that it's uh, up here with the other wires like so and then what you're looking for is this wire that says audio out uh, which is plugged into a 3.5 mil jack so just unplug that like so and then we're going to plug in the 3.5 mil from the center console into that and then we're done now as for the two usbs that i said i was going to put in the glove box if you have a look at the top of the glove box here there's a couple of holes, so we're just going to use those. There we go. 
go. So at this point, the head unit is completely connected up and now it's just a matter of putting things back together. So at this point, I have put back together the center console. I've replaced the glove box and now I need to screw down the screen and replace the air vent. So that's what I'm gonna do now. All right, last thing to do is stick the vents back in. All right, let's switch it on. Okay, so the final piece of setup that you need to do is go to car info, which will give you access to the car's original system. And you wanna to navigate to media and you want to use USB aux. That is what is gonna give you sound from the new unit through your factory Mercedes sound system. And it's pretty much as simple as that. Now, if you wanna see me review this head unit and check out all of the features that it has, I've already done that in another video and you'll find that link in the video description. As for this particular video, if there's anything that I missed during this installation video, please just tell me in the comment section below. If you have any questions at all, just ask and I'll see what I can do about answering them for you. If this video helped you out, please hit that like button and of course subscribe to the channel if you like this kind of content.